My name is Keith Brooks, Business Development Manager for AWS GovCloud US, Amazon's isolated community cloud region. And today we're going to spend some time talking about ITAR compliance on the AWS cloud, specifically the restrictions that pertain to storing and processing data in the AWS GovCloud US region. Now, collectively, these restrictions are referred to as the ITAR boundary, and we'll discuss that in detail in a second. But first, let's recap ITAR. ITAR is the International Traffic and Arms Regulation, a U.S. government law that regulates the import and export of defense articles as defined by the U.S. munitions list. There are 21 categories of articles on the U.S. munitions list, and they cover things across categories like components, materials, equipment, and even software and technical information. To give you some real examples of, of items that are on the U.S. munitions list, it covers things like spacecraft, aircraft, rockets and missiles, weapons, nuclear data and information and technology, as well as technical data. A key provision for ITAR is that ITAR articles can only be accessed by U.S. persons and more specifically have to be safeguarded from foreign nationals and foreign nations. This is particularly important when it comes to hosting ITAR workloads on the cloud. This is exactly where AWS GovCloud comes into play because GovCloud was purpose built to host ITAR data in the cloud. However, even though GovCloud is our ITAR compliant region, there are still restrictions that apply to each service available in GovCloud. And as previously mentioned, these restrictions are codified in the ITAR boundary for each service. And the ITAR boundary very specifically describes where ITAR data is permitted and where ITAR data is not permitted within each service available in GovCloud. But let's use a real example to illustrate this. So we're going to use four common services that are available in the GovCloud region. Let's look at EC2, S3, EBS, and RDS. And I'm going to illustrate the ITAR boundary for each of these services using examples of what's permitted and what's not permitted. The caveat to this is that the full list is available in the official ITAR boundary documentation available on the GovCloud user's guide. But for EC2, ITAR data is permitted within the EC2 instance and any ephemeral drive associated with that EC2 instance, as well as key pairs when using HTTPS. Along those same lines, ITAR data is not permitted within EC2 metadata or key pairs when using HTTP. Looking at the S3 service, ITAR data is permitted within S3 buckets. However, ITAR data is not permitted within S3 metadata or S3 resource tags. Same thing applies to the EBS service. ITAR data is permitted within the EBS volume. However, ITAR data is not permitted within EBS metadata, EBS volume names, and EBS snapshot names. Let's look at the RDS service. Similar concept applies. ITAR data is permitted within the RDS database instance itself. However, ITAR data is not permitted within RDS metadata, RDS snapshot names, or RDS resource tags. Collectively, what's permitted and not permitted per each of the service is defined as the ITAR boundary. And the ITAR boundary is an extension of the AWS share responsibility model which is a key set of input to architecting and operating ITAR workloads on the AWS cloud. The full set of ITAR boundaries can be found on the AWS GovCloud user's guide, 
specifically within the services available in the AWS GovCloud US region section. The user's guide can be found on our AWS GovCloud homepage at aws.amazon.com forward slash govcloud dash US. And in addition to the user's guide, you can reference our complete compliance documentation on ITAR available at aws.amazon.com forward slash compliance. Thank you for your time today and have a great day.